Great day in Muskegon, Michigan. Amen. All right. And we're, we're going to talk about a dream that I had again. <laughs> All right. Um, so it's kind of a crazy dream, but I got a lot of scriptures out of it, and I didn't actually go and look things up. I just, well, I did, but um, not from words in a dream or it's just uh, basically um, let me just read it to you <laughs> Amen. some guy was making himself into a bomb using four batteries and wiring himself in the back of a car he asked for water and someone brought it to him and he was pouring it into the battery cells then I saw the streets that the streets are paved with the word of the Lord Blessings and favor. I could see the words all over the streets. Blessing and blessings and favor, all the way down the road. <laughs> mm. So um, that was from the dream book. Amen. Mm -hmm. So the, the first scripture that I'm going to read about is in Amos eight, and I do have notes if people want to have a copy. Amos 8, 11, and 12. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord God, that I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread, not, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. They shall wander from sea to sea and from north to east. They shall run to and fro, seeking the word of the Lord, and but shall not find it. So I'm reading from Amos 9 now. I saw the Lord standing by an altar and he said, Strike the doorposts that the thresholds may shake and break them on the hands of them all. I will slay the last of them with the sword. He who flees from them shall not get away. He who escapes from them shall not be delivered. Though they dig into hell, from there my hand sh shall sh take them. Though they climb up to heaven, from there I will bring them down, and though they hide themselves on the top of Carmel, from there I will search and take them. Though they hide from my sight and at the bottom of the sea, there I will command the serpent, and it will bite them. It shall bite them. They go into, the ca into captivity there before their enemies. From there I will command the sword, and I shall slay them. I set my eyes on them for harm not for, and not for good. The Lord of hosts, he who touches the earth and it melts, and all who dwell there mourn, all of it shall swell like the river and subside like the river of Egypt. He who builds his lairs in the sky and has founded his strata in the earth, who calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out on the face of the earth, the Lord is his name. Are you not like the people of Ethiopia to me? O children of Israel, says the Lord, did I not bring up Israel from the land of Egypt, the Philistines from Kaphor, and the Syrians from Kir? Behold, the eyes of the Lord God are on the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from the face of the earth, yet I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, says the Lord, for surely I will command, I will sift the house of Israel among the nations, as grain is sifted in a sieve. Yet not the smallest grain shall fall into the ground. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, who say, The calamity shall not overtake nor confront us. On that day I will rise up the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down, and repair its damages. I will raise up its ruins, 
and build it as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom. And all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord, who does this thing, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes him who sows seed. The mountains shall drip with sweet wine, and all the hills shall flow with it. I will bring back the captives of my people Israel. They shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and drink wine from them. They shall take gardens and eat fruit from them. I will plant them in their land, and shall no longer, no longer shall they be pulled up from the land I have given them, says the Lord your God. Amen. Amen. Matthew 27, 27. 57. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now when evening had come, there came a, a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who himself had also become a disciple of Jesus. This man went to Pi Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate commanded the body to be given to him. When Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his new tomb, which he had hewn out of a rock. And he rolled the stone against the door of the tomb and departed. And Mary Magdalene was there, and the other Mary sitting opposite the tomb. Amen. I think I was, yeah. On the next day, which followed the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered together to Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember, while he was still alive, how that deceiver said, After three days I will rise. Therefore, command that the tomb be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away, and say to the people, He has risen from the dead, so the last deception will be worse than the first. So the, um, there was a movie that came out recently, and it had to do with this Roman soldier. And see, these people are being held accountable and that they're responsible for what was going on here at that day, at that time. And so what they were saying was, you know, we, we have to have people set there in place to make sure that nothing happens, that he, that he can't be taken away in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. And so that was what was going on. And so Amen. Pilate said to them, you, are, you have a guard, go your way, make it as secure as you know how. So they went and they made the tomb secure, sealing the stone and setting up the guard. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Now, after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord had descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. And his countenance was like lightning, his clothing was as white as snow, and the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. So the guards didn't have any control over what they were, what was going on. They didn't have control. All they could do was just whatever. They became like dead men. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they didn't have any control. Amen. So they were trying to control the situation, but God had a totally different plan going on there. Yeah. The angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. Thank you. As he said, Come and see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and indeed he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Like, wouldn't that just freak you out? You're going to see Jesus, and you know that he was just crucified and laid in a tomb. Yeah, right. And they wrapped him with the bandages. Yeah. They wrapped him, and they laid him down. 
And they were basically saying goodbye to him. And then, the, then this other thing happens, and it's like, whoa, what's going on here? <laughs> so they quickly came out from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran and be, to bring his disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, Rejoice! So they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then, the, then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to Galilee, and there they will see me. Now, while they were going, Behold, <coughs> excuse me, Behold, some of the guard came into the city and reported to the chief priests all the things that had happened. Then they had assembled with the elders and consulted together. They gave a large sum of money to the soldiers, saying, Tell them his disciples came at night and stole them away while we slept. So they were trying to avoid that situation. <laughs> and then something happened, and now they're trying to avoid another situation because of what did happen. Amen. And if this comes to the governor's ears, we will appease him and make you secure. So they took the money and did as they were instructed. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. Then they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. All right. Amen. And we're going to go to Second Corinthians fourteen. Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and though through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. And now we're going to go to For we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To the one we are the aroma of death leading to death, and to the other the aroma of life leading to life. And who is sufficient for these things? For we are not, as so many, peddling the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as from God we speak in the sight of God in Christ. Do we begin again to command ourselves, or do we need, as some others, apostles of the commandment to you, or letters of commandment from you? You are our epistle written for our, in our hearts, known and read by all men. Clearly you are an epistle of Christ, ministered, mis ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh, that is, of the heart. Amen. And we, we have such trust through Christ toward God, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God, who also made us <clears throat> sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. All right. But if the ministry of death, written and engraved on stones, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away, how will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? For if the ministry of condemnation had glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. For even what was made glorious had, not, had no glory in this respect because of the glory that excels. For if 
What is passing away was glorious. What remains is much more glorious. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech, unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end that was passing away, but their minds were blinded. For until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in Christ. But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lays on their heart. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we receive mercy, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, not handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, those whose minds of the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the Lord, and ourselves, your bondservants, for Jesus' sake. For it is God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard-pressed on every side, not crushed. Yes, Lord. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, yes. struck down, but not destroyed, Thank you, Lord. always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our mortal flesh. So then death is working in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believe that, and therefore I spoke, we also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he who raised up the Lord will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that grace, having spread through the many, many cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is about for a moment and is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. Yes. For the things which are seen are temporary, yes. but the things which are not seen are eternal. Yes. For we do not, for we know that if our earthly house is, this tent is destroyed, we will have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan and earnestly desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. Yeah. If indeed having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we who are in this tent groan, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that the, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Mm -hmm. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who also has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. Mm -hmm. 
So we are always confident knowing that we are at home in the body. We are a, we are abs if uh, while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yeah. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Amen. Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to Him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what He has done, whether good or bad. Amen. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. But we are well-known to God, and I also trust are well-known in your consciences. For we do not commend ourselves, uh, commend ourselves again to you, but give you opportunity to boast on our behalf, that you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance and not in heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If or if we are sound of mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ compels us, because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died, and he died for all, that those who live should no longer for themselves, yeah. but for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Yeah. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Yeah. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and that has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trans trespasses to them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Mm -hmm. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. Yes. As though God were pleasing, pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf to be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin mm -hmm. for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. We then, as workers together with him, also plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, In an acceptable time I have heard you, and in the day of salvation I have helped you. Mm -hmm. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We give no offense in anything that our ministry may not be blamed. But in all things we command ourselves as ministers of God in such, in, is in much, patience and tribulations, in needs, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in sleeplessness, in fasting, by purity, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Spirit, by sincere love by the word of truth, by the power of God, yeah. by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, Amen. by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and not yet killed, as sorrowful and yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing all things. Yeah. O Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own affections. Now in return for the same, I speak as to children, you also be open. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? Mm -hmm. And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? 
And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. And God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them, and I will, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Amen. Thank you. Amen. I'm going, um, going to what's, what's in my Bible called spiritual warfare basics. Beware of the devil's traps and snares. We are not to be ignorant of the devil's tactics. We can overcome all the schemes of the devil. The devil is a schemer. Mm. A scheme is a plan, design, or program of action. The Bible talks about the wiles of the devil. A wile is a trick or a trap. A trap is a snare. Warfare involves tactics and strategies. Mm. The greatest generals are the greatest tacticians and strategists. You cannot win without a strategy. Do not allow the enemy to strategize against you. Overcome and destroy his strategies through prayer. Amen. Traps and snares are hidden. People fall into traps unknowingly. We are delivered from the snare of the fowler. A fowler is a hunter. Mm. Satan is the hunter of souls. We can release ourselves and others through prayer. Yes. Thank you, Lord. And I'm going to uh, Romans nine seventeen. Okay. For the Scripture says to the Pharaoh, "For this very purpose I have raised you up, that I may show my power in you." and that my name may be declared in all the earth. Therefore, he has mercy on whom he wills. Whom he wills, he hardens. You say to me then, why does he still find fault? For who has resisted his will? But indeed, O oh man, are you to reply against God? Will the thing formed say no? Say to, say to him who formed it, why have you made me like this? Does not the powder have the power over the clay from the same lump to make one vessel for honor and another for dishonor? What if God, wanting to show his wrath to make his power known, endured with, long, with much long suffering the vessels of wrath prepared for destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had prepared forehand, beforehand for glory, even us whom he called not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now I'm going to go to Romans 10, 8 through 18. So. But what does it say? The Lord is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of the faith which we preach. What if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from dead? You will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, Whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him? of whom they have not heard? 
And how shall they hear without a preacher? Mm -hmm. And how shall they preach unless they are sent? Yeah. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith comes by hearing by the word of God. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, indeed. Their sound has gone out to all the earth and their words to the ends of the world. Amen. Amen. So, uh, I have a friend that, um, she talks about this word track, and so in our minds we're thinking, well, I hope, I hope so, mm -hmm. I hope this is so, right? Mm -hmm. And then you move on to say, I know it's so, mm -hmm. and then, or I think, I think so. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so I hope so, I think so, but now you can tell people, but now I know so. All right. Amen. Yes. So um, I, I have some more handouts, but uh, I had talked to previously about uh, making these backpacks for people that mm -hmm. were homeless, and mm -hmm. I had also um, talked about uh, going out and, and being the love of Jesus to people. Amen. And, um, sometimes you run across people that are like holding signs up and you just want to give them something small because they don't that like they don't really have anything they can't carry things or whatever right. so mm -hmm. I had um, gotten a few of these uh, small New Testaments Amen. and they have Psalms and Proverbs in them Amen. and so um, you can take something as small as just yeah, a zip bag right. in a New yeah. Testament yeah. and give this out to people. You Amen. might want to put something um, more intimate or personal in there. Yeah. Um, Amen. This one particular New Testament with the Psalms in it um, mm -hmm. had, a, had a few things in there that can be shared with people. Amen. And so... Uh, I like that. It gives you uh, I mean, scripture like references... So what I did was I kind of wrote the first page down till I ran out of time and I had to get to church. <laughs> so I, was, I had everything ready last night, but then I was like, oh, I should add this because this is really good. So um, it, it directs people the way of salvation, and then it gives scriptures, peace, of, peace, of, uh, peace in time of anxiety, encouragement in times of loneliness, uh, relief in times of suffering, comfort in times of sorrow, mm -hmm. guidance in time of decision, protection in time of danger, courage in time of fear, rest in time of weariness, strength in time of temptation, mm -hmm. uh, warning in the time of indifference, yeah. forgiveness in time of conviction, right. rejoicing in time of forgiveness, mm -hmm. Praise and time of thanksgiving. So that was just on the first page of that. Amen. Um, wow. What I didn't get to write down, I can actually read on the out of here. basically uh, suggested readings and so if you have people that have never read the Bible before mm -hmm. it kind of gives them a little bit of instruction to yes. uh, mm -hmm. like a reference mm -hmm. so um, on the next page it has the Sermon on the Mount mm -hmm. the Golden Rule the Greatest Commandment the Righteousness of Faith the Royal Law Christ's New Commandment Christian Love um, under this is under dynamic doctrines. Man's universal guilt, atonement, the new birth, justification by faith, Christ the good shepherd, Christ humil humiliation and, and exaltation, resurrection of the Christian dead, 
the second coming of Christ, mm -hmm. which is very soon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. The last judgment, the new heavens and new earth, um, Christian fruitfulness, Christian responsibilities, Christian stewardship, prevailing prayer. So um, That's awesome. all of these are... Um, Excellent ways to, to reach out to people. Yeah. And um, sometimes we don't know what to say, but the, the Holy Spirit can be our guide and, and yeah. guide us to, you know, maybe that somebody has a need so that we can reach out and start a conversation with a little zip bag and a New Testament. Amen. 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 That's so true. And, Amen. Um, Chaplain Chrissy, I just want to jump in here. I, I think that's an awesome idea. Because, uh, some, you know, we're used to giving money because we feel like, oh, this person don't have. But like you say, the Word of God is way more important than money. And a lot of, you know, uh, a lot of them go get alcohol and stuff, you know. Right. So that's I've seen that. such a blessing. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. Yeah. That that's that concludes my morning manna of today. Amen. Nine twenty twenty. <laughs> Nine twenty. Amen. Right. Twenty twenty.